Good day, this is Sandra. Welcome to the Soil Restoration course. Soils are extremely important, as you may know, to the very breath that we are able to take in every time we breathe, as well as to the food that we eat, as well as to all of the biodiversity that exists on the planet. It all is born from soil. The soil ecosystem is extremely damaged currently through our current practices of poisoning the soil with pesticides and fertilizers, growing monoculture crops, grazing animals and removing all the trees that would normally be there and provide us with oxygen, provide us with biodiversity, as well as create moisture in the air and create rain. So at the moment, soil is dying and the one thing that majority of us might not realize is that the very ground we walk on is a living thing it's a living ecosystem there are so many beautiful little characters that get together with the plant which is essential and they act like little superheroes with their little superpowers doing amazing things that I was not even aware of, despite my agricultural science and agricultural microbiology background, until quite recently. And the more I have been learning about soil and looking at research studies and presenting on soils, presenting on fungi in particular in the last 10 years, reality is that nobody else really knows about this. And I feel like we need to know about this. We need to <laughs> we need to study this more and we need to know how to return it back to its original pristine or biodiverse state in order for all ecosystems to kick in and start functioning again and so that we can regain climate balance, so that we can actually grow food that is not poisoned and that we can provide the opportunity for all other creatures as well as future human generations to live happily ever after. So really this course is getting to know all the creatures that are in the soil on the microscopic level, including bacteria, fungi, the protists or protozoans that consume them, as well as the nematodes that consume them, and all of them form the poop loop. The soil ecosystem is a living thing and we are completely symbiotic with it. Our very outbreath, our carbon dioxide that we breathe out, is used by plants to then be transformed into carbohydrates or liquid carbon that is then transferred down the root system to feed bacteria and fungi. This is key, as these organisms are the only organisms that can actually extract nutrients from rock, sand, silt and clay to then feed the plant and therefore us, without bacteria and fungi being fed initially by the plant and providing the nutrients to the plant, the ecosystem would not even exist. In addition, the plant also feeds bacteria and fungi by dropping its limbs and its leaves and cycling its nutrients back to itself via fungi and bacteria. So fungi and bacteria are actually the most nutrient-rich organisms that exist on the planet because they have the direct access to the sugars from the plant as well as the minerals from the soil matrix from the sand silt and clay however without the organisms that graze or predate on bacteria and fungi those nutrients end up locked up in fungi and bacteria it is only when such organisms as the unicellular protozoa such as amoebae and flagellates and ciliates, and also the multicellular organisms such as nematodes, it is only through their consumption of fungi and bacteria that the plant actually gets access to the minerals that it requires because they are the consumers of the most nutrient-rich organisms on the planet. So every time an organism such as a protist or a nematode feeds on the fungi and bacteria, it has to release the excess nutrients it actually receives. And by doing so, that nutrient that is released is immediately available to the plant 
as this is occurring around the plant roots. And so these organisms are also quite rich in nutrients and anything else that eats them, the little microarthropods and mites and springtails, anything that consumes these microscopic creatures ends up releasing the excess nutrients from them as well. And it keeps going up the food web. Any organism that consumes these microarthropods ends up releasing plant available nutrients all the way up to us. Whenever we release our own poo, we are giving a gift that can be utilized by plants. <laughs> so this is the story of giving. This is a love story of the soil, which we can endearingly also call the poop loop. <laughs> but really, this poop loop becomes then the driving force of the ecosystem in the soil and of course that powers the ecosystem above ground and as a result we receive oxygen and food from the system and it is the only way that all the nutrients that we ever need are provided to us and other creatures. So basically this poop loop diagram describes really what the course is about. It describes the different organisms that we'll be talking about and their interactions with one another and with the plant and with the soil matrix and the organic matter and how it all fits together to create this incredible ecosystem that feeds us, that feeds the biodiversity, that feeds animals, that powers plants, that creates oxygen, that filters water, that decomposes pollutants. But the only way this can occur is through these creatures actually being present in the soil. All of them have a key role to play. And the greater the amount of the different tiers of feeding, the more robust the ecosystem is. The greater the diversity of the organisms and the diversity of the different genera and the different roles that these organisms serve, the greater these potentials. So this course is really about these soil creatures, the little superheroes, the little characters and the vital role they play and how they need to be present in the ecosystem in order for it to function and support plant growth, our health and biodiversity. So this course is all about this ecological process. The beauty of that process is mind-blowing and heart-opening. And my greatest desire is that we fall in love with the soil ecosystem. And in that case, we will care for it so much because we learn to love it, that we will want to preserve it and we will want to nurture it and we will understand how important it is to our very lives. So let's go through the course overview. There are 11 units and they all address a particular aspect of the soil ecosystem that is essential in order for the ecosystem to function. So first of all, soils are introduced. I talk about how they actually form, what makes soil soil, and what is their composition, what makes them what comprises a soil ecosystem, as well as how we have destroyed them and what are the ways and examples in which we destroy them. The second unit is about the soil ecology and the soil food web. So all these creatures start to emerge in unit two. The lessons focus on what is soil ecology and what is the soil food web? How do these organisms interact? And then we start talking about the various superheroes. So unit three focuses on bacteria and their superpowers, their function in soil structure, how they support plant nutrition and immunity. And it is a very rich unit on the various roles and functions and gifts that bacteria supply to plants and the soil ecosystem. And you can see bacteria here in relation to all the other organisms as these tiny little dots in the background. So they are the smallest superheroes in the story. Then in unit four, we'll talk about fungi. We'll start looking at fungi and a buscular mycorrhizal fungi are the most ancient form of fungi and plants actually colonized land with these fungal symbionts on their roots. And without those, plants could not access nutrients. 
And so they are vital in plant nutrition and also provide immunity to the plants as well. And these are fungal hyphae here. In these images, they're not necessarily mycorrhizal fungi, but this is what fungi look like under the microscope, and that's how they grow throughout soil. And when in symbiosis with the roots of plants, they're kind of like an intermediary. They basically mediate the interaction between the plant and its soil ecosystem. Unit 5 is on ectomycorrhizal fungi and saprotrophic fungi. So ectomycorrhizal fungi are a little bit different to a vascular mycorrhizal fungi, but they play a very similar role and they are mostly associated with trees and shrubs, particularly in eucalypt forests and conifer forests. In this unit, we also examine the saprotrophic fungi. And these are fungi that decompose organic matter. They are not symbiotic with roots of trees, but they live closely associated and feed upon the organic matter that plants drop to the ground. And they are super important in decomposition of that organic matter, extracting the nutrients from that, and really accumulating carbon in the soil as well. So fungi are the primary carbon sequestration mechanism in soils. Unit 6 features protozoa or protists. And you can see these organisms featured here. This is a shell of an Arcella amoeba, and the amoeba lives inside of it. It's got this beautiful round shell. And then we have another type of tested amoeba, which has a shell around it also and captures bacteria and consumes them. They play a vital role in nutrient cycling and in soil ecology. These are so interesting. They are so fascinating and they are so beautiful. And it's just a pleasure to learn about these tiny little creatures. The next lot of superheroes are the nematodes in Unit 7. These organisms are multicellular, so they're no longer a microbe, so to speak. They're not a microbial organism, even though they are microscopic. These are worms, and 80% of animals are actually nematodes on Earth, which might sound surprising. But they have so many various functions and so many various superpowers, and their mouth parts determine what they feed on. Some of them feed on bacteria, called bacterial feeders, such as this one. Some of them are predatory and actually consume other nematodes, such as this one. Some of them are omnivorous and consume various organisms. And some of them are fungivorous, and they actually consume fungi. They pierce fungi and suck nutrients out of fungi. Or some are plant-associated and also plant-parasitic in certain situations where they invade the plant and suck sugars out of the plant. So those are the main superheroes in the story. We'll also talk a little bit about the arthropods as well. Not much. We're concentrated more on the microscopic creatures, although many arthropods, the legged creatures are also microscopic, but they are covered at some length in the soil ecology and soil food web unit two, and they include springtails, which I highly recommend looking into, and I think you'll really enjoy this unit. Unit 8 is about carbon sequestration into soil. So how important good soil structure and all these organisms are in sequestering carbon into the soil. Unit 9 is about cultivation of microbial diversity with a focus on fungi, because fungi are the ones that are mostly harmed through agricultural practices, through plowing and disruption of their mycelium and the hyphal cells that comprise the mycelium. So this unit is very much about what do we do? How do we cultivate this? How do we bring back the soil ecosystem to its full functional capacity for plant growth? Unit 10 is about vermicomposting, which is one of the ways that we can actually cultivate the microbial ecosystem through feeding our waste to composting worms. And we'll also talk about other composting practices that are beneficial as well. And then I'll show some practical examples of this. Unit 11 is about soil restoration practices. How do we apply what we've learned and what are some of the examples of that and what happens when we start cultivating soil microbes in the soil and even amending soils with applications of 
soil ecosystem participants that we can gain through the vermicomposting and composting practices. So all of that is up for grabs, and I'm sure there will be more units in the future as well. At the moment, this is huge as it is, as each of these units contains several lessons. So you'll just be learning a lot of exciting information about all these creatures and what they do and how they function and their vital role in that ecosystem and how their contribution and their particular gifts ensure plant growth and provide nutrients and immunity to the plant and how we benefit from their gift. So this is it in a nutshell. I hope that this short introduction has given you enough background information on the course to inspire your learning juices to flow. The best way to access the course is to go to the soil restoration course playlist because that's where all the lessons will always be in order. So that's what I highly recommend. And any questions, just pop in the comments section and I'll endeavor to answer those as best I can.